Good morning. We have already had uh, a morning session in Moransovsky Palace, and those who were present there could feel how the civilizations are overlapping on the Crimean land. And now we will have the most intensive session, the final session of the Sevastopol and Yalta round, because this week there will be two more events in Moscow. And I would like to ask to prepare Mr. Babichev. And the most important thing for us will be to finish at 11.45. And uh, because the majority of you are going away today, and they asked us to check out uh, before noon. So just a minute or two for each speaker, and if you have any suggestions on the strengthening of our project draft recommendation on the results of this Congress, you have already been handed out these uh, recommendations, please uh, highlight two or three moments which you suggest we should strengthen. I think that is all that I wanted to say, and I am giving floor to the director of the Institute of Philology and History of Arts of the Humanitarian Pedagogical Academy, where we were the day before yesterday. There was a wonderful presentation on the formation of the United Nations, and uh, it was uh, very inspirational, and we violated all the time limits on that day. Okay, Yaroslav Ivanchenko. Dear colleagues, I would like to say a few words in the beginning. Of course, this session which is dedicated to the development of the education and the development of UNESCO is incredibly important. I was happy to be in Paris in the headquarters of the UNESCO and to negotiate with the administration of the UNESCO. And I know how important this uh, organization is and what they're doing for the education and culture development but you know that during the last several years they have been in crisis, uh, they are lacking finances and they are feeling some threats from our Western partners who are suppressing the policy of the UNESCO and only thanks to the fact that uh, there are a lot of developing countries this uh, organization is still working in its humanitarian direction. When I was a student uh, of the international relationships, I was taught that international relationship is, first of all, the relation between the nations. That is why it's called in that way. At the beginning, these were not the relationships between the governments, but uh, the relations between the art workers, the scientists, uh, and only on this basis there were created the uh, dialogues uh, which led to the assignment of agreements. At the moment, uh, the role of science uh, the role of education in international relations uh, is incredibly high. And uh, we feel it pretty well uh, at the example of our republic, when all the external contacts uh, are frozen. And uh, despite of this fact, we regularly receive delegations uh, who are dealing in the fields of education, science, and uh, last year in Varansovsky Palace, there was a wonderful conference about the world South and uh, England, uh, and there were wonderful lectures about the history of Russian-English uh, relations and the uh, and uh, landscape and gardening art. The same work is provided by our Vernansky University. A huge uh, work uh, with 50 countries uh, is provided by Nikitsky Botanic Garden. And all those uh, connections uh, 
All those uh, contacts uh, give us uh, the impression that uh, the international communication, which is incredibly important for the peoples of the Crimea, are not lost. And uh, the more contacts we have, the stronger the voice of the people who are dealing with education and science and art for the politicians. And in this, and this will probably help us to strengthen our communication in political dialogue. And uh, here I would like to stop and uh, to give floor to Igor Babichev. Dear colleagues, our time limits are very uh, strict, and it's no more than 10 minutes, uh, and it's better if it will be five minutes for each speech, and uh, in the magazine partnership and organizations, we will public all the reports, and all the speeches which were provi provided as videos are streamed uh, on our website. Dear colleagues, uh, we have we are very short of time, but my speech will be finalizing and uh, I will make some conclusions. Uh, so I don't know how much time it will take. So colleagues, uh, the crisis of the public consciousness which we have discussed is really deep in Russia. And uh, in this year of the COVID infection, and in fact, it's the first environmental world war, uh, is even worse in the situation, and the life uh, is uh, forced uh, online. And uh, Albert Einstein said that if uh, uh, the technologies will substitute live communications, we will get a generation of uh, idiots. But this crisis of consciousness cannot uh, destroy the loss of ontological sense uh, and uh, the substitution with uh, simulators based on the principle after us the deluge. And the worshipping and the golden calf is uh, replacing the real values. Uh, they say that the true worldview ontology really exists in Russia, and we have uh, told each other about this uh, during this conference in different words. Uh, the ontology is based on the science, on the whole spectrum of the uh, Russian philosophy and on the artistic knowledge, religious religion should be, so the ontology should be based on, use a wide palette. Sociology Daniel Brandt uh, offered uh, an analytical method which he called uh, access analytical method. So the same method was uh, offered by Prigozhin in natural science. The, it says that any phenomenon can be decomposed into components uh, and shown in a double band axis. And uh, the axes form a unity in their contradiction and are inseparable from each other, being the principle of complementarity. These four axes are hierarchical axes of the first, second, third order, depending on depending on the significance for the phenomenon. This method can be applied to the description of the world ontology, if we, uh, to the description of big social systems and the corresponding ontologies, if we can determine the essential core axis, the core axis of the world. Describing this axis of large uh, social systems of the world and world civilizations, we came to the conclusion that there are only three such axes. The first uh, axis is the what's described in po political economy, the informational axis. It shows the relationship between labor and capital, the relations of the eternal rights. The second axis is the traditional axis. On the one uh, end is the individual access, and on the other is glo glo global approach. And the third access about which people often forget is the access of good and uh, evil. And uh, in the modern world, uh, good manifests itself as harmony, and evil as lack of harmony or disbalance.
The harmony in the social world is the quantitative uh, measure of uh, evil and good. Harmony limits the contradictions between worldviews, and harmony limits the uh, social cooperation space. Harmony limits the manifestations of evil as the manifestations of good. And this results in a classification of world ontologies. In the space of harmony, we see the unity of ontology and harmony, and each civilization has its own perception of traditions. And after Rodin, we will call this uh, the, ontolo the ontology of a harmonious integrative system. And Dostoevsky's claim that beauty will save the world is scientifically confirmed. Beauty is a multiple expression of harmony. There is no beauty in evil, although there is charm of evil. Professor Averyanov proposed a different scheme of tradition for each civilization. Uh, the traditions are the fullness of good that has a spiritual source. The body of tradition is a historical type that is unique for each civilization. And the third circuit of tradition is unity, which connects the traditions and civilizations to each other, forming a universal all human unity. And this is an alternative to the globalist world. The world unity of all the humans is called the nosphere that the Russian cosmic philosophers once talked about. And local civilizations are united in this unity and they can compete in the manifestations of good. Uh, the local civilizations may be destroyed uh, if their spiritual uh, source is destroyed. This is uh, how the global world uh, uh, behaved uh, towards other smaller civilizations and uh, all of those global civilizations and plus fascism are the ontologies of evil and and the ontology of uh, uh, economical integrative world uh, was uh, described by Peter and Sorokin. The red lines uh, show harmony and space this integrative system can be decomposed along the vertical axis as a social cultural one. That's how these uh, three contours were described by Sarokin. All three axes are in harmony, all the axes of capital labor as an alternative economic system, which is much talked about by Sergei Glazev and the researchers of his school, including the respected Alexander Agave. The essence of the economic integrative system is that the balance of economic and social interests of various groups should work for the common good. It is this achievement of the common good uh, for men and society, the achievement of space goals uh, should be basis of social economical interaction of humanity, the creation of a harmonious integral system in Russia and in all local civilization, the creation of peace, justice and uh, solidarity and freedoms and national self-government from top to bottom is the foundation of the Russian dream. The multi-centric world of local civilizations, each of which is moving towards creating its own harmonious integrative system, which are connected through partnership into the universe universal unity of world civilization, not global, but universal, with its cosmic goals, this is the content of the Russian dream. Uh, this is a message that Russia can and should bring to the world by developing the high dreams of other peoples. But it is clear that Russia should start with itself, as everybody should start with him or herself. There is no automatism here, and uh, it's a personality that develops in its entirety, in its freedom, in its harmony, in its uh, without any slavery, in spiritual, mental and physical health. Personalities of this type must control the destinies of the world and then the goals are achieved and there must be a productive uh, person that can bring the Russian dream and the ontology of 
Tolstoy. Russian dream to the world. There is a quotation from Tolstoy's novel War and Peace. All thoughts, all thoughts that have huge consequences are always simple. My whole idea is that if vicious people are connected with each other and make up a force, then homeless people should only do the same. It's so simple, but in fact it's not simple. In October, November, Moscow, I hope, will host a public scientific conference dedicated to the interpretive ontology and uh, the founding meeting of the organizational committee of a huge project uh, under the working title the Federal National Council of the Movement of Russian Dreams and Russian Victory. Among the initiators is the Civilization Club, we, and I really hope that the Yalta Civilization Club will take part in the conference. We invite everyone to take part in this event. Uh, all the information will be available on the website of the Federal People's Council. On this site, you can read the declaration of the Federal People's Council, which describes in more detail all that I quickly tried to set out in my thesis today. Thank you very much. I invite all of you to join. And thank you very much for giving me time to tell you on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. You managed to, to voice the main thesis to your colleagues. Each time when you offer some initiative, please don't forget to put it into the draft recommendations, which we are writing each day. We only can provide up to five minutes to everyone. Uh, Kama Hamara, the professor of the Sevastopol State University. Good morning to your colleagues. It's not easy to speak briefly such themes. I will be speaking about the policies. We all know pretty well that at the moment the Middle East, historically, this region takes a lot of attention and besides economical and strategic interests, Lately, we see that there is also information interest and uh, for Russia, and uh, when we communicate with the Middle East, uh, and what we see at the moment is that it's strategic interest for Russia, the United States, and China are all coming to this region, and uh, we are living in a transformational time, and we are going away from monopolar world, and there are many versions of the geopolitical development, whether there will be a bipolar world or multipolar world or three-polar world. And when we are speaking about our strategic interests, we can see that we are implementing our interests on the territory of Syria, and this interest uh, raises a lot of uh, dissatisfaction on behalf of America, and uh, China has uh, important interests, uh, economical interests uh, in this region, and during the last three years, we can see that uh, they are helping to restore Syria and uh, to construct a lot in this region. And uh, if we look at the um, uh, first interests of those geopolitical subjects, we can speak about the neighbors, uh, Turkey, Iran, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. And uh, on this level, on uh, there is also some very intensive uh, political and economic uh, communications, and uh, each of the subjects uh, tries not to show the real interest, but probably to uh, maintain the political and economic space. And today we can see that Turkey keeps the first position in military conflicts and it's involved in the conflicts in Syria, in Egypt, in the Mediterranean Sea, and now they are also interested in Karabakh. And the interest of Turkey is not to stay in this region, but to receive a strong negotiation position in the Mediterranean area. 
And lately, I can say that in the mass media, the main desire of those uh, Western interests is when Russia will finally fight with Turkey, because uh, we are strategical partners and our interests are already coming into a conflict. The first one, the first such conflict uh, happened in March, and now the most acute conflict is in Nagorno-Karabakh. And here, everybody understands that Turkey is uh, also surviving the regional crisis and the political crisis. The second subject here is also very important for us, and we also have a conflict of interest. It's Iran. And uh, as recently we have seen the very active and aggressive political communication threats uh, from the uh, United States and from Israel. And they are also, there is also a possibility that there will be a war between the United States and Iran in the nearest future. And if we are speaking about the political systems, then we can see that uh, the United, the media of the United States uh, calls them a threat for the whole world. And uh, in the consequences, this might destabilize the whole region, the Saudi Arabia, Iran, and it is threatening the world. And Saudi Arabia and Bahrain and uh, Emirates are surviving a new process which can be called uh, a peaceful or peaceful regulation with Israel. But if we get into detail, actually they had never had a direct conflict with Israel, but it is just a continuation of the project by Trump, a deal of the century where he is trying to regulate the Arabian Palestinian conflict through economy to start a new era for the Middle East. Uh, unfortunately, your time has already, it's already finished. Uh, well, I can say that I think that in any case, the main political process uh, will probably happen after the elections in the United States, because at the moment, uh, the problem is the lack of uh, Western uh, uh, of a Western geopolitical project. And we also have our geopolitical project. We should not forget that our interests sometimes come into uh, conflict, and we should uh, maintain our geopolitical space. Thank you very much. Andrei Martinkin, dear colleagues, we are trying to keep the possibility to speak within five minutes, and we understand that if we do not follow this uh, rule, then we will probably have to limit it to one minute. Please remember that everything is published and everybody will be ready to read. I am speaking about the Arabic world and the United Nations after the uh, World War II and the first efforts of communication. I would like to say that the Arabian world after the First World War lost in the World War One and didn't have any subjectivity, uh, was not a subject of international communication before the war and uh, lost uh, all the rights after the World War One. and the first uh, League of Nations didn't take into account uh, the population of the Arabian territories and uh, they were totally under the influence of the superpowers and uh, it was a mandatory system and consequently now we see that these territories of the Arabian countries in the Middle East especially Syria, Iraq, Jordan and so on Mainly these territories are suffering of a lot of conflicts because the borders were 
assigned uh, without uh, taking into attention the interests of the people who live there. And after the World War II, within the borders which were created by the superpowers, not by the people who live there, and without uh, taking into account the historical processes, Syria, Imam, and uh, the and uh, Palestine was uh, divided into the Arabic part and the Jewish part uh, to create Israel. And starting from this moment, we have always witnessed uh, the uh, conflict and the beginning of the Palestinian problem. From the point of view of the United Nations, it's important to mention that the crisis has uh, also been uh, worsened by the fact that the Arabic world uh, did not recognize the United Nations uh, and uh, they were not included in this uh, framework. And uh, in 1978, uh, a very important year, it's the beginning of the peace peacekeeping operations of the United Nations. And uh, from this time on, we have uh, um, the military surveillance of the United Nations. As we said, the problem of uh, refugees uh, also emerged at this uh, time, and there was created the uh, United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian refugees in the Near East. Uh, but there are certain problems because this agency only deals with the refugees of 1978 and the refugees of further or of later conflicts are not covered by its activities. And uh, there is also the problem of cooperation between the United Nations and the Arabic world, and it has not been solved so far. I will not uh, develop this uh, Further, I will just say that up to now, the Arabic world has not received uh, the full rights in the international cooperation and uh, they are not full subjects in this and, and there are some efforts to create uh, projects and as the Arabic world is not united there are there is the necessity to keep up the traditions and cultures of the Arabic world so that they would not be destroyed and that they would not disappear in the interests of the Western countries. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have saved 30 seconds to someone. Thank you. Alexei Vojtinok. We can see the titles. Let us not uh, spend time on the titles. Um, the theme of my speech will be the discrepancies between generations as uh, the consequence of global conflicts. Global conflicts uh, have created a lot of uh, problems, and experts mainly speak about uh, economical financial crisis, but uh, due to global conflicts, uh, which are managed uh, processes, managed by certain forces, there are also so cultural and demographical problems so with the disruption between the generations and the destroyance of uh, dis destroyed uh, family values. Uh, different various uh, social, cultural technologies are used uh, by globalists uh, who are solving the two major problems. They do not uh, try to make it secret that uh, they would like to uh, sh to lower the number of population, and the second is the social cultural leveling of uh, the traditions of cultures and uh, the effort to destroy the differences in traditions and cultures. And uh, for this, there is a number of tasks being performed. Uh, including young people in the postmodernist uh, cultural world, uh, which is depriving young people from the traditions of uh, senior generations and the effort to destroy traditional families uh, 
which uh, has uh, a man and a woman and uh, a lot of children, but also the disruption between the uh, several generations when the uh, senior generation provides the upbringing of uh, children and uh, provides the traditional values uh, and uh, senses. And the globalists uh, are avoiding the normal upbringing and education of children and uh, normal traditions, uh, and they are supporting the robotization of countries. And in the interest, uh, in the first focus of globalists are children and young people. Children and young people are imposed uh, with uh, um, strange uh, symbols uh, and cultures, including fascism and anarchy, and uh, they are imposed with uh, subcultures, and uh, they are trying to destroy young minds with the use of uh, drugs. If in uh, the 60s, 90s, uh, young people were involved uh, in the use of uh, usual drugs, chemical, alcohol, smoking, and promiscuous sex, in the 21st century, young people are introduced to digital drugs, gadgets, and video games. Doctors know that in the brain of gangsters, the same chemical processes occur as in an ordinary drug addict. Now it's much easier and cheaper to get a child used to a digital drug, and it's uh, easier and uh, cheaper, and very few people understand the danger of this phenomenon. Now the parents themselves uh, are getting fair from one year of age on digital addiction. Grandparents uh, almost don't participate in the upbringing of their grandchildren, and parents are busy at work, and the child is immersed into an artificial virtual world from the early childhood. Globalists do not even hide how they see the future. For example, in Spielberg's new Hollywood science fiction film First Play Get Ready shows the future of humanity living like homeless people in sheds but connected to the world network where everyone chooses their own gender, race, where everything is very bright, but it's all illusion and deception. In another new sci-fi computer animation film, very popular among young people, called A Little Battle Angel, they show the world of future as a planet which is dominated by cyborgs and robots, and each a uh, normal human would like to change the parts of his of a body with uh, robotics uh, and uh, the aim of a person is to become a cyborg and those cyborgs uh, in violent competitions uh, kill each other. As for the uh, computer games, uh, now there are technologies which uh, help to get the children addicted to them as soon as possible. And uh, if 20 years ago there were some plots uh, in such games, now there are mostly metro games where they endlessly kill each other. Uh, so what we'll get uh, in the result, a generation eager can set, uh, fully dependent on digital technologies. They don't want to get involved into live communication in real life. They don't read, they don't want to get involved in the creative arts, music or sports. Why do sports if there is a virtual sport where they are paid millions and uh, they are degrading intellectually and socially and physically and the elderly generation is getting further and further away from the children and the children are not interested in communication with them because uh, they don't understand the modern technologies and in the USA it's a norm to send to the elderly to the um, assisted living facilities. What? And I will give a number of recommendations of what can be done with this uh, problem. First of all, as uh, bloggers are extremely popular with young people, we should get involved the bloggers of good, 
those who tell it that viewers uh, that uh, getting involved into voluntary work is uh, cool, that you should get involved in the personal development, you should offer game products of moral, educational and uh, themes, we should support and promote uh, musical and uh, cinema projects which are supporting traditional values of families and good, and we should promote uh, and support uh, tourism. The more the children spend time in the real world, the better. We should provide educational work among the young people and uh, tell them about uh, traditional values and uh, we should com uh, organize communication with the elderly generations and hold on the title of remote education. Thank you very much. Uh, I understand that we are extremely short of time, but I am very thankful to you. First of all, the issue which you have told us about, in my opinion, I, as an elderly person, can say that it's extremely important and uh, we cannot pretend that we don't see it and uh, because otherwise our world will turn into an absolutely different uh, planet. And when I speak with the young people, I ask them, do you know this, do you know that? I ask my students and they say, why should I know that? We have Wikipedia. But uh, I try to explain to them that people who are writing in the Wikipedia are just uh, normal people and they may make uh, mistakes and they may not know something. But if you are reading this in the internet, you don't keep it in your head and you will not be able neither to analyze or to make some strategical conclusions of this information. And it's uh, extremely sad that young people, it's very nice that you as a young person, as a representative of this young generation, I think uh, that you are speaking about that. And I think that our world will lose a lot if we start to turn people into biological robots who will only do will only act uh, in accordance with some uh, very precise program when they will, as humans, will become free application for the gadgets and uh, digitalization is a method which should improve our life, which should make it more comfortable, but it cannot replace our knowledge, it can't replace our analysis, it can't replace uh, our uh, ref reflection. I will, would like to congratulate you with this wonderful speech. Please, please remember about the time limits, uh, and your text can be placed on our website. Dear colleagues, I would like to continue the theme of the previous speakers, and for me the key word will be human centricity. I am a technical guy. I am a doctor of technical science, but I offer to write the following term, term in our uh, draft uh, as a social technical system. Today we are combining these two different fields. Uh, in the past, physics and lyrics were in conflict with each other, but now we are offering a project which is a very specific tool which will allow to solve three huge problems. They are shown here on the slide, and for each problem we have it's specific type, uh, it's specific whale. Our project is based on three whales, and each whale is uh, perfectly well uh, processed. Here we have the image of the first, second, and uh, third problems. We have come back to the definition of a human being. We actually do not remember ourselves as uh, young children. When we are very young, we had uh, a kind of syncretic uh, 
thinking. From the point of view of a grown-up person, we could not connect to different things. And we managed to use the system from the school children to pensioners. And it's a structure of imagination. It gives us the miracles. Uh, the human brain becomes four times more creative when, then, when it works in its uh, usual form. The same we are, in the same way we are using the symbols of people and digitals, and we are using the traditions and uh, new economy. So it's a double contract economy, and we have increased uh, the efficiency without uh, changing anything. We are just reducing the transitional costs, and we have managed to achieve 10 percent better efficiency. This is the presentation of Creative Commons, so everyone can uh, use it. Just don't forget to make a link. As we are short of time, this is our target audience. At the moment, we are working with four classes in the Urals, in Yaroslavl, in Tubna, and in Kaliningrad. So we have children from 11, children at the age of 11 to 17 years old. The second target audience is in Kazakhstan, and there we are working in a school, at a college, and in a university. And the third territory is in Plekhanov Institute, and there we do everything for the group, for this uh, target group. This is, these are our KPIs. We are working with FIPS. We have been working with them for a long time, and we have created a system which allows to capitalize the results of the intellectual activity through, because we are we are providing applications uh, for the rights uh, on our inventions and through our automated system we have uh, uh, provided 10 applications next year there will be 100 and next year it will be about 1000 so this uh, this is a working technology and in the end I would like to say that we would like to invite everybody to cooperate in our consortium. It's education, it's a, a legal entity, and we have a bank account which is connected with the blockchain, and we cannot use all the ideas, but they are saved in our database, and we have a register. and. And we invite everybody to cooperate with us. We are, we are open to everybody. We are working already with Kazakhstan. So as for uh, Eurasian Economic Association, we are working with them. And we can convert rubles to Tenge. And uh, that's it. Thank you. Dear colleagues, as... Uh, the co-moderators, we would like to thank, first of all, our speakers who understood our situation and uh, as the majority of us are unfortunately going away and uh, you managed uh, to uh, shorten your uh, ideas into a very brief form and uh, it probably it was even more efficient because it gets uh, directly into the mind. And um, I would like to thank the organizers of the Congress. We will go on our, with our discussion on Monday, so everybody who can 
do it, please join us in Zoom. We will be discussing the recommendations, the initiatives, and we have had uh, we have created a long problems uh, a long program of uh, agenda for the next uh, decades. So we during these five days we have heard about 70 different reports and speeches and as we were discussing very essential things and we also yesterday we created a new project Constantinos battery we were speaking about the humanity and we were uh, discussing this uh, in an informal way and uh, I would like to thank everybody for this uh, intensive work I would like to thank Olga Nimkova who is still working here and somewhere here is Olga Hermelina who these are the people who may perform speeches themselves but they organized all the logistics uh, which uh, would go and uh, even our rush now is not uh, there it's uh, the problem of the hotel and uh, everything went very smoothly though it was nearly impossible let us thank them thank you very much uh, thank you we would like to thank all the partners. We understand that the situation is uh, very complex, and we, nevertheless, we managed to provide this Congress, and I think that uh, it was an important event. I wish you to stay in good health, to have a nice uh, trip to those who are traveling to Moscow, Vladivostok, and uh, wherever you are going, and I hope that we will meet again at, at such kind of events. So Yalta is not just a modern history, Yalta is very modern and I hope that the principles that were created here in 1945 will still survive and create a non-spheric strong civilization and uh, we hope that we will stay safe from any kind uh, of diseases, biological or technological. Thank you very much цивилизацию и делать его более устойчивым, развивающимся и абсолютно не подверженным никаким заразам биологическом и технологическом смысле. Коллеги, до свидания. Всем огромное спасибо.